I don't understand anything in quantum physics, but they have, they have a lot of words for things. Hashem is constantly renewing the creation every day, Tamid, constantly. Like every moment, the Nefesh Chaim says. There isn't a, a moment that passes that Hashem isn't imbuing that moment with the power of creation. That if Hashem wouldn't will the world and everything in it into existence at each, each and every individual moment, whatever the smallest unit of time is, they say in quantum physics, the, the plunk, or like a plunk second or something like that. It's the smallest unit of time. Every plunk second, second if we want to use the terminology of uh, quantum physics, Hashem brings the world back, brings the world back, bring the world back. There's a philosophical proof to this, which is, I don't think the Greeks meant to prove this concept, but there's a famous paradox, it's called Zeno's Paradox. Everybody knows it, but you don't know what's called Zeno's Paradox. Zeno was a Greek philosopher, mathemati mathematician maybe. He proposed this, the famous paradox that motion is impossible. The paradox of motion. Motion is impossible, impossible. Why is motion impossible? Because in order for me to proceed from point A to point B, there is an infinite number of points in between. So no matter where I would draw the midpoint, before I get to that midpoint, I have to get to a point that's between this point and that point, and so on and so forth. So. So it would actually be impossible for me to ever get really anywhere because of the infinity of points that I have to cross. How do you, how do you, how do you cross a threshold of infinity? How do you do that? Or another way to put it is if I go halfway to the door, I can never go out the door because I can imagine a point between here and the door. I have to get to that point and there's another point between that point and the door I have to get to. And there's an infinite number of points. I really ne should never be able to go anywhere. Another way that Zeno illustrates his paradox of motion, he says, imagine the arc of an arrow through the sky. Freeze time for a second, and here's the arrow. Click the stopwatch, freeze it again. The arrow is in a different place. Click the stopwatch, freeze it again. The arrow is in a different place. No matter where you freeze time, the arrow is somewhere, and it's not moving in that moment. It's, it's just there. No, I just froze time. We're in a single moment. There's the arrow. So if in one moment it's here, and one moment it's there, and one moment it's there, but whenever I freeze time, I can never see the arrow move. When did it move? When did it move? Did it move in the space between moments in time? Where is that space? How did the arrow move? It's the paradox of motion. The answer is the Nefesh Chaim. He says that motion really is an illusion, because all there is is the will, you know, so to speak, I have a rotson, I have a will that I'm going to move my hand in this way. And so Hashem is recreating my hand in each moment a little bit further along in space than it was before. There's always a new moment where there's a new reality and my things are a little bit different than they were in the last moment. But the actual motion doesn't, can't exist, the Greeks proved, right? So it's a paradox because we see that we can go out the door and we see that motion does happen, but there's no explanation as to how or why. So that's what the Nefesh Chaim says. I'm a chadish b'chol yom tuva ma'asad reishis. Constantly, every moment is being recreated so then we could understand that, yeah, it's true. There really is no motion. There's just a recreation again and again with changes each time the creation happens. So anytime you move, you have to be aware that Hashem just recreated you like... Many, many times. So, but in quantum physics, they did, they did actually, they think, measure time down to its smallest moment. Like you can't break up time any smaller. I don't understand it, but this is the way they talk. I don't understand anything in quantum physics, but they have, <laughs> they have a lot of words for things. They have a lot of words for things. Uh, you know, like string theory. You know, there's these strings and the strings vibrate. I have no idea what that means. No, but honestly, it's like Kabbalah a little bit. Like Kabbalah has also a lot of words that we might recognize because we use them in a certain way, but it means something totally different. And you have to have a lot of training to understand what that means. When I talk about a string and I say the string vibrates, what do I mean? Well, until I go through, you know, 10, 15 years of uh, prerequisite courses, I won't really know. But if I think that it means somebody's playing a violin, I'm...
sorely mistaken. So every moment of creation is another is another reminder to us of Hashem. And that's how we can come close to Hashem through His work. It's not easy. It's not easy to... Of because... course it's not easy to carry that awareness with you all the time. And that's the opening phrase of uh, Shulchan Arach, right? Shiviti Hashem lenegdi tamid. I set Hashem before me tamid. That same word. That Hashem creates the world tamid constantly. I set Hashem before me tamid. Zekla gadol Torah. This is a great principle of the Torah. Uva ma'alos ha-tzadikim. And in the high levels of the tzadikim. Asher hochem lifnei alokim. That they walk before God. That's a level of very righteous people. But it's sort of also the, the blueprint. Meaning the goal, the goal statement. The architect draws a blueprint before he starts to work. So he knows where he's heading. So before the Shulchan Aruch even begins... Here's step one, here's step two, here's step three, so it gives you the goal. The goal is the constant awareness of Hashem. Motion really is an illusion.